Well, aren't you a regular Nancy Drew? I learned that from the Nancy Drew detective. Okay, go. You think you can follow the clues and solve the case of the missing condiment, Nancy Drew? Fuck. You guys have read every Nancy Drew mystery ever written. Nancy, please tell me you're joking. Wow, you suck at this Nancy Drew stuff. You should get a new hobby. My name is Carson Drew, and this is my assistant, Nancy. Nancy. Nancy Drew. It's curtains for you, Miss Drew. Nancy. Nancy Drew strikes again. A regular Nancy Drew. Okay, okay. Hello, regular Drews. Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode 50? 50. 50. 50. 5-0. That's um, crazy. That is crazy. It'll be a year in March, right? Yeah. Right. Two years. Two, uh, two no. years. No! Oh, stop. <laughs> it literally... I can't even... Mm -hmm. I don't know how every single time we talk about an episode count, I like freak out but it just doesn't it just still doesn't feel real we do it every time i think <laughs> that's okay but anyway but yeah we also have a, a little we had a little surprise for y'all at the beginning of, of this um episode if y'all typically skip the intro go back and listen to it because we have a new intro that we um just created for uh this very special number 50 episode and special it is because we have a very special topic today and some special guests. Yes, we do. Uh, um, we are here with April, uh, our good friend April, and Emily. April, do you want to introduce yourself really quick? Yeah, so I was on before, um, and I kind of mentioned I didn't really have an Nancy Drew story until uh, my dear friends, Becky and Corey, started this podcast. <laughs> um, I have... Since they started their podcast, I have read my first Nancy Drew book. Yay! I have seen my first Nancy Drew TV episode, mm -hmm. whenever they did their TV episode. And um, those of you who follow them on Twitter might remember a brief uh, Twitter thread about me playing through a Nancy Drew game. Treasure in the Royal Tower. Yes. Yeah. Did and we live tweet that before we got too drunk? You live tweeted for a little bit. <laughs> and then I got too drunk. Uh, yeah. The only thing I really remember from it was that you tweeted me saying... Nancy, you need to have less transactional relationships. Yeah, mm, fair, <laughs> fair, fair. Um, but yeah, so yeah, it's uh, it's really just been the past couple of years, I guess. Now it's been two years of the podcast, <laughs> um, and so. But yes, my my understanding of Nancy Drew is still mostly through these two lovely ladies. <laughs> Thanks, April. And Emily, I know you you don't I, really know Nancy Drew, but... Yeah, I have seen like half an hour of the Emma Roberts Nancy Drew movie, and that's about it. Um, I read some of the OG Hardy Boys books. Okay, um, okay. Yes. They were my dad and his brothers. Oh my gosh! Um, that's nice. But that's, that's it. That's so funny, because we talk about this a lot, is the reason why I started reading Nancy Drew, and a, a really common Nancy Drew story is that people inherited their parents' copies of Nancy Drew, and that's how they started reading it. But your dad just happened to read Hardy Boys, so you read the Hardy Boys. <laughs> yeah, so funny. funny. So funny. Lovely. Okay, well, today we are going to be playing some Nancy Drew games, you guys. We have three wonderful games. Corey, do you want to talk about this one? Because I don't even know how to talk about this. <laughs> yes. How do, what is the title of this even? It's called Nancy Drew, Young Detective, Mystery Number One, One Step Ahead, The Mystery Party Game, mm. which it's truly a mystery party game in a box. Um, I, it, this was, I think, 2005. Was that, do we have a year on it? Let me see. 2005. Yeah, this was published in 2005, so way, way, way before the Hunt a Killer series started, but it is from just reading the outside of the box, because we haven't even really opened it yet. It, it seems kind of similar to that, where it's the whole party in a box. Sure. It even has invitations and party favors, yeah, apparently. Yeah. Very exciting. Um, and it kind of looks like, I mean, the box itself, it kind of looks like it's styled like the Girl Detective series. Which like is a the, little concerning. Yeah, the logo and everything, but it's Young Detective instead of Girl Detective, so yeah. I don't know if it's supposed to be a tie-in to that series because that was the series being published back in 2005. Yeah, or it was just... published by Specialty Board Games Inc., which I've never heard of before in my life, but it was, you know, given the green light by Simon & Schuster, copyrighted by Simon & Schuster, mm -hmm. so I don't know how that 
uh, flew. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know how Simon and Schuster was like, yeah, go ahead and, and publish this this game that looks so much like our Girl Detective series. It has basically our Girl Detective logo on it, but don't call it Girl Detective. This was hard to find, probably because it was a girl detective thing and because it was from 2005, mm-hmm. but apparently it probably didn't do that well, I'm guessing. <laughs> I don't know that for sure, but because there's mystery number one, and that was the only one that they made. So. And you barely found this, right? It you... took me a long time uh, searching on eBay and just like... And you just happened to time. come across it because you didn't even weren't even searching for this when you found mm-hmm. it? It was in a lot of other board games with other stuff, so I had to buy several games oh just to get it, but yeah, I just got it. But yeah. Here we so are. we're gonna play that. We're also gonna play. Oh, where did it go? Oh, it's somewhere under there. Oh yeah, yeah. We're also gonna play the new Nancy Drew Mysteries board game that just came out. Um, I bought this at Barnes and Noble, but mm-hmm. it's by Outset. Outset Media, Outset which Media. was the same company that did the Nancy Drew Collector uh, game that we which played, we played in the last, last time. Board yeah. game, and that episode. was fun. Yeah. Um, and this one just looks like kind of a typical Clue situation, but themed like Nancy Drew. So. Very excited about that. Mm -hmm. And then lastly... Yes, we have... um, This is actually a fan-made game made by one of our friends, Ray, who is um, known as Paw Pennies and Bento Boxes (laughs) on, I think, Tumblr and Instagram. Uh, But it's Cards Against Nancy Drew, so it's... (laughs) Cards Against Humanity, but in the style of the Nancy Drew games. I'm so, so excited for that. Very, very excited. I'm going to be so <laughs> lost. It's going to be yeah, great. Yeah, some of the jokes may not land <laughs> if folks don't get the references, um, but that's Especially okay for the games. But We'll, we'll yeah. just laugh for you. It's fine. <laughs> I'm very excited. Um, okay. I think, actually, Ray and her sister worked on this together. So oh, thank you, Ray and Ray's sister. Yeah, I'm not sure what the sister's name is, but thank you to both of you. Um, yeah. Okay. Ready to get started? Let's do it. I was going to okay. say, I have a theory of why it's Young Detective instead of Girl Detective. What's your theory? What's your theory? Okay, so my theory of why it's Young Detective instead of Girl Detective um, is because I know this from um, TV shows and uh, I, uh, and uh, their, t- their toy tie-ins, mm-hmm. um, is oftentimes whenever something that's coming out that they know they're going to be doing merchandising with, the merchandising starts being created before the the media is actually finished. Um, Mm -hmm. So that's why, especially back in the 90s and 80s, when there was a lot of children's media that really was specifically to sell toys, there were sometimes toys that were created that had like like a motorcycle for the character that literally never appears in the show. And Mm -hmm. it's because they are actually working independently because they're being created while the show is still being created. So they don't really communicate with each other. Gotcha. I was just going to say, because it's off-brand Nancy Drew, but... Um, <laughs> it's it's so copyrighted by was, the publishers, so I can't imagine it's really... So, my guess is that there was probably, during the original R&D development mm-hmm. of Nancy Drew and this kind of relaunch back in 2004, is that they were unsure of the name, mm. of whether or not it was going to be Girl Detective, Young Detective. They probably eventually landed on Girl Detective for marketing reasons, especially because if they're trying to you know, stay in their lane of making money, of getting girls into it. I mean, in this, so this actually might be a little peek into what that Nancy Drew series was almost called. Hmm. Interesting theory. Interesting theory. And the Girl Detective series started in... 2004. So, yeah. That's, April was right. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know how she knew I that. Googled! <laughs> I really like children's media, actually, (laughs) even though I was never into Nancy Drew, but, um, yeah, it's, it's the TV, like, show development is completely separate from the merchandise development. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't believe that. Sure. So, I do think that there was probably just, they were originally working with the name Nancy Drew Young Detective, Mm -hmm. and then they changed it, there was probably a disconnect in communication, and then they were produced before... Um, they were told of that change, Got and it. they probably just went, we already spent the money, it's close enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. hilarious. So well, the back of this, yes. the game description, is you've followed Nancy's, Nancy Drew's many adventures, now's your chance to be part of one. The Nancy Drew party game is a party and a mystery in a box. You and your guests take on the roles of amateur detectives and work as a team to help Nancy solve her latest mystery. To do this, you will set the stage for a visit to River Heights where you will collect clues from various locations, including the scene of the crime, Lucia's psychic shop, 
Ooh. Um, the Cyber Cafe and Bookstore and the River Heights Police Station, all in the comfort of your own home. Game setup and party planning are made easy with the inclusion of invitations, loot bags, and detailed host guide. Everything you need to set the stage. Nice. So with, you know, Lucia's Psychic Shop, this truly is a girl detective game then. Yes. Because that's a reference to the Nancy Drew Girl Detective series. Mm -hmm. So we have been, just for April and Emily, we have been kind of nervous about this because the Nancy Drew Girl Detective series replaced the original Nancy Drew Mystery Story series in 2004, like you were saying, uh, but we hated it. It was really <laughs> not very it's good. Really bad. It's it's just, it's a mess. And see, it's I haven't read any of the modern Hardy Boys books because they came about around the same time mm -hmm. and like had modern storylines that were weird. Well, I loved, well, I, I never read, we, we've read the Hardy Boys Nancy Drew crossover mm -hmm. episodes in, in episodes, books, mm -hmm. in the File series, series, which is a separate series. That was from like the 80s. It was yeah. from the 80s, which came before the Nancy Drew Girl Detective series, but was not supposed to be a continuation of the mystery stories. It's supposed mm -hmm. to be kind of like a separate thing. Um, and we love those oh, so yeah. much. There's some really great series, but this does seem to confirm that it is definitely based off the Girl Detective series mm -hmm. if the box wasn't enough of a tip off. So yeah. I'm, I'm hoping it will be great. But. Oh yeah, I was going to say there's definitely some sort of agreement of licensing because um, you, that is the original artwork of like the eyes and the lips. Um, that is that is the exact same one and they would legally not be able to use it. Right. right. Unless they had some sort of agreement. So let's see. In here we have an empty solution envelope. Okay. Um, which is confusing. A bunch of different little detective notebooks which I, which I suppose is um oh, for, each of, us for each of us to take notes in got it um there is a loose cd which is a little concerning awesome. i think it's supposed to be in that in plastic that sleeve, sleeve. Probably, probably. <laughs> oh okay this is i think the solution i didn't read it i just said that i just saw that it said solution this was like brand new still in the shrink wrap I'm so everything should be here i'm wondering just... if they maybe thought like a mom would prep this for the Probably. children. <laughs> Probably. But Here we is... are the moms and we are the children. <laughs> the hosts Did we ever grow up? No. Here are a bunch of different invitations. Oh my god, this is so cute. Okay, I'm gonna read this invitation. It says, My name is Nancy Drew and I'm a detective. I need your help solving my latest mystery. I'm hot on the trail of a master thief who has stolen a diamond necklace from my friend Mrs. Mahoney. Oh. Uh, I have a feeling he's still here in River Heights. The thief has eluded the police in the past and seems to take a lot of pleasure in the chaos he causes. He loves nothing more than seeing the police scratching their heads and wondering where he'll strike next. Help me find Mrs. Mahoney's jewelry and end this thief's career for good. Please meet me at the home of blank <laughs> address, date, time. <laughs> Please bring RSVP by. Why did you not mail us these? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so cute. Okay, so we know Mrs. Mahoney's jewels have been stolen. So we need to figure out who's the thief, where did he hide his loot, where will he strike next, and what is he next going to steal? <clears throat> so I guess we just want to go through each of the locations and sure. read the, uh, you know, the clues, the clues, that, the are clues that are left in each room. Why does it say internet access recommended? I don't know. Um, I believe... <laughs> They had, kind of like the Hunt to Killer, had like additional information and solutions uh -huh. on the website that you don't need it to solve the game. I they think there was something case... similar, but I already looked up the website and it's no longer online. <laughs> so, so, shocker. Yeah. <laughs> you can do like Internet Archive? Uh, not that I could find, but oh well. So I feel Way like we should scene. start That's what it is. at the scene of the crime. Okay. I feel like that makes the most sense. When a detective is called, they go directly to the scene of the crime. Yes. Let's go to Mrs. Mahoney's house, right? Yes, and we can start the first track of the CD. That's a good dog. Oh, great, you're already here. Let me introduce myself. My name is Nancy Drew, and I'm a detective. Amateur, of course, but I think a lot of people would agree I'm pretty good at it. I love a good mystery, but mostly, I like to be able to help people when they're in trouble. 
I'm so glad you're here. My good friend, Mrs. Cornelius Mahoney's beautiful diamond necklace, the Aurora Borealis, has been stolen. Apparently, nothing else is missing. I could use all the help I can get to get it back for her. I'm busy with another case and could really use your help. So let's not waste any time. To begin, why don't you check out the scene of the crime? Mrs. Mahoney's house is right on the riverbank on Bluff Street. So far, the police roadblocks haven't turned up any thieves, so if we're lucky, this thief is still in town along with the necklace. My original examination of the crime scene found four clues. Let's meet back here after you've investigated and compare notes. <laughs> okay, so Mrs. Mahoney's house, we found a wet Van Gogh exhibit flyer. Um, we found... <laughs> Please look at this, you guys. This, this is the crime scene photo. This is not a blurry photo. It looks like a inverse tin type. Okay, first off, <laughs> first off, I am just going to say that the figure is clearly added to the photo. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, Photoshop. They designer. also... They are clear. I understand we're supposed to understand they're like behind furniture, but it really just looks like our intruder is just levitating and they just have a torso. <laughs> yeah. And one arm. And well, head. it's clear from this photo to me that the intruder is a dude. Also, in the photo of the location, there's a really weird thing written on it on the window to the bank with what's one. Hmm. Well, that seems significant. To the bank with what's one. And one is spelled W-O-N, so it's like you've won something, not like one yeah. as in the number. Also, mm -hmm. I don't know if this is something, if, like I guess I don't know how closely we're supposed to be looking at <laughs> There's an odd spacing between what's and one. <laughs> <laughs> That might be a Photoshop. I don't know if that's wrong. <laughs> I have a theory. Now, I don't think that this is actually what happened, but I love this as a theory. Okay. Mrs. Mahoney is committing insurance fraud. Okay. <laughs> I don't see... Put that one on the back burner. I don't know that we would put that in a children's game. No, I don't think so. Also, <laughs> considering the Mrs. Mahoney character in the Girl Detective series is supposed to be a, a good lady. Yeah. You know what I mean? She's yeah. I guy. don't see any difference between the crime scene photo and where we currently are. Other than the figure, it's mm -hmm. not here. And then it's, it's, it's like you're just slightly back in the crime scene. And photo. the only significant detail does seem to be the necklace. And I am going to mainly be on the fact that the jewelry and the figure seem to be the only things that are photoshopped in. Right. So. And the words. And the words. All right. So that's all that we find at Mrs. Mahoney's house is just the flyer, the crime scene photo. So, the drops of water on the floor, the wet uh, Van Gogh exhibit poster, mm -hmm. um, the dude, the I blurry guess. image, and then the words, maybe? The words mm -hmm. that say, mm -hmm. to the bank with what's one? I think that counts. Should we play the next track in here? Okay. By the river. I discovered four very interesting things at the crime scene. Did you see anything unusual? Too bad the image from the surveillance camera was so blurry. I could make out a little bit of detail, though. Didn't you find it odd that the thief didn't steal the pearl earrings and the golden ruby bracelet, too? Did you notice the window? Someone wrote a message on it. It looked like a riddle to me. And inside, just below the window that overlooks the river, there were some wet spots, as if whoever came in was dripping wet. Since it hasn't rained in days, where did the water come from? If you'd like to go back and take another look, I'm sure Mrs. Mahoney wouldn't mind. I also picked up this clipping announcing the Van Gogh exhibit. Mrs. Mahoney is on the gallery board of directors, so she's encouraging everyone she knows to go. I'm sure I've read about a thief who leaves riddles for his victims. I wonder what our thief will be after next. Oh, Ned, my boyfriend, will be here any minute. We're going to the cyber cafe and bookstore. Why don't you drop over? Grab a bite. We might catch you there. While you're there, you might want to search the internet for some information on the Aurora Borealis necklace. 
If you can find a dictionary or encyclopedia, don't be afraid to do a little digging there too. Also, try and find out if there have been other thefts in the area. I'll call my friend George and ask her to go there too and get a head start. Come back when you're done and we'll decide what to do next. That's Ned. See you back here in a while. If you have time, see what you can find out on Vincent Van Gogh, in case you're interested in going to the exhibit next week. Okay, back to my stern, I take my bow. Is that written down somewhere? From George to Mystery Party Detective, sent sometime today, subject, another riddle. Hello all, I received an email that I think has something to do with the case you're working on. I All it said was, back to my stern, I take my bow. It means nothing to me, but I'll bet that you and Nancy can sort it out. Good luck from George. How do they spell bow? bow? B-O-W. Okay, it's spelled the same as far as a ship uh-huh. and the action, right? Right. But yes. is it is there a comma, back to my stern, comma? Comma, I, I take, take my, my bow. bow. So, River Heights Police Bulletin, there's a note at the top scribble from Nancy. Heads up, detectives, I just dragged the following clues off the web. One came off of a River Heights Police Bulletin and the other off of a search I did on Aurora Borealis necklaces. They all seem to relate to our case. Good hunting. Um, from Nancy. So, Brennan Hill robbery. River Heights. Wealthy Brennan Hill philanthropist Mamie Hayes was the target of a jewel thief yesterday. The most notable piece among the stolen items was a three- Carrot, spelled incorrectly, diamond engagement ring known as the Stargazer. The ring once belonged to Mrs. Hayes' late late husband's grandmother and has been in the family for over 100 years. Other valuables were left on the premises. Road network secured so thief believes still to be in the area. Aylesworth Gallery robbery, also River Heights. Be on the lookout for a person or persons responsible for an early morning robbery robbery that took place at the Aylesworth Gallery. Missing from the gallery is a painting by little-known Dutch artist Van Hoogen entitled North Night Sky, valued at an estimate $2 million. Fortunately, the priceless Jan Viermer painting The Lace Maker on loan from the Louvre remains under lock and key at the gallery. Although not confirmed, it is believed to be the theft... The theft is believed to be the work of master thief Vincent von Gott May, also known as the Northrop Knight. The real known of the thief is unknown, although it's known from video surveillance of the previous heist that the man believed to be the culprit has a sports tattoo. Sports, it's sorry, sports a tattoo of a star on his left arm, not a sports tattoo. Good. <laughs> Wait, that's a lot of information. Okay. River Heights coffee shop break in. A local coffee shop down down near the river was broken into early this morning. An entire rack of jelly full donuts was missing, along Shelly with a bag donuts. of bagels. A smear of cream cheese on the counter is being tested for being, fingerprints and DNA. What? <laughs> Nancy drew a search engine results. The Aurora Borealis necklace was named for the Aurora Borealis or Northern Lights because the light catches the diamonds and it looks like the Northern Lights do, matching vibrant colors moving across the sky. Can I see it? Okay, wow. so we have Crime at the Mahoney's, something going on at the gallery, mm-hmm. and then the Brennan Hill with the haze. Yeah. I was going to say... Well, if these are boat clues and they're on a river, they're using the boat to get around. I will say it does seem There's like... There's boat right there. There's a boat dock. They only... <laughs> It seems like the, the the thief, except for the donut bagel thing, I'll come back to that, I'll try to figure out what yeah, But the thief between the Roar Bralius Diamond, the engagement ring known as the Stargazer, and the painting known as the North Night Star Sky, the thief, um, even though they, you know, have seen other things that are perfectly worth stealing mm-hmm. and ignored them, they obviously have something specific for, like, star sky stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, like, I don't think this is where this game is going. But, for example, if we wanted to set a sting, <laughs> we would need something. Don't think this is a Van Gogh exhibit because Starry Night yes! is, in the, is, in the, is in the thing. This thief has a star <laughs> fetish. <laughs> and a Van Gogh fetish. <laughs> because of his name. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay, it's time to see what the police know about all of this. Do you mind going over to see Chief McGinnis? I think he may have four more new clues to share with you. If they haven't picked the thief up at the roadblocks, he must still be in the area. Unless he's traveling some way other than by car. Meet me back here after you're done at the police station. Meanwhile, I'll touch base with Mrs. Mahoney. She must be wondering if we've made any progress.
Okay. <laughs> it's a little on the nose. Okay, first thing that we see is a River Heights Police Department, like, um, branded stationery. It okay. says, you sleep in the wake, wake, like, waves, of, this, of the things that I take. Mm-hmm. Okay. You got that one? Mm-hmm. All right, next is a photo um, of Chief McGinnis and reporter. Um, these photographs are terrifying. It's like they took a, a photo of a real person. Oh, there's a huge just, distortion like, effect. Distorted them severely. So it's Chief McGinnis and this reporter. It says, all the best, Chief Willie Steele, River Heights star. Hmm. And the man in the photo with Chief McGinnis has a star tattoo on his hand. Picture of Chief McGinnis and thief. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> it's a fucking demon! <laughs> we also have this sign. Why? Okay, okay, no, no, I'm sorry. I know I said I was done with the photos, but I'm not. Um, okay. What's that demon face? What's his name supposed to be? Chief McGinnis. Willie Steele. Willie? Willie Steele. Will he steal? Will I? Oh Willy, will my I god. <laughs> okay, so I just want to take a moment to acknowledge the fact that these. <laughs> men's heads are have been enlarged Whoa. to where they should be proportionally with the body. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, so we have our culprit. Well, it's... we have two other things from the PlayStation as okay. well. We okay. have a, a mug shots of three suspects here. Vincent Vandergooden, Lyle Helmsford, and Paul Aries, Aris. Um, and then we also have a crime scene map that has all three mug shots on it again as well. Interesting. Now let's see how terrifying these pictures are. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so I'm thinking it's the mustache guy. Right. Paul. That's what it looked like. Yeah. And Paul Aris is the only one who A, has a mustache, and B, has a, basically a star name. Right. So. Um, yeah. Oh, and um, we still haven't looked at this, the crime scene map. Um, Why is Nancy's home listed. Yeah, it's she not, hasn't been a crime scene not, <laughs> that not we yet. know of. So are we guessing Paul is our guy? 100% yeah. Paul's our guy. He's going to go steal Starry Night at the River Heights Museum. How many of those questions did that answer? So that's, who is our thief? Where did he hide his loot? His boat? His presumably. Boat? <laughs> um, where will he strike next? The uh, River Heights museum and he's gonna steal story night. Okay. Could we be that's my thing. Yeah, I was like I was like, do we do I don't know if there's anything else. like I don't know if we if there's any way for us to be more specific than just this guy clearly has a boat. <laughs> he clearly has a boat. Yeah. Um okay. yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's do it. At first, I want to hear what you think. Get your heads together and make your final decision so that we can help Chief McGinnis stop this crime spree. All right. You've got four key questions to answer. Answer, Nancy. Who is the thief? Paul. Willie, Where did whatever. He find his loot. The boat. boat. Where the boat. will he hit next? The museum. What's next? River Heights Museum. On his list of things to steal. Starry night. Starry night. And you've made your decision. Fill in your answers in the detective notebooks and find the solution envelope. Rip it open and follow with your Rip it open. I feel like this is a very is this one? incompetent police. Person. I know, I feel like <laughs> that all of these 12 year olds have to go Is that the end, or are we reading this now? Yeah, read okay. it now, read it now. All right, the solution. The thief is Paul Ares. The loot is hidden in his boat on the river. Next location is the Van Gogh exhibit on Howe Island. At, I guess the River Heights Museum. Next target is the Starry Night um, painting. And now um, let's turn on the CD for the explanation from Nancy. <laughs> so fun. Hello, sir. I think we've cracked the case of the stolen diamond necklace. If you'll have your officers check the boats on the river, they'll find our thief and hopefully the necklace and all the other starry things he's stolen from his targets along the river. We think he intends to go to Howe Island next to steal the Vincent Van Gogh painting, Starry Night. Good You're luck. welcome, sir. I mean, the We're glad to that. <laughs> wow, you guys are great detectives. I hope we have a chance to solve another... Excuse me for a second, that's my cell phone. Hello? Yes, this is Nancy Drew. Who is this? A robbery in the City of Light? Paris? <gasps> sure, I've been to Paris. <sighs> well, 
my fellow detectives, it seems that we just solved one crime and we've got another one to work on. Oh, man. I'm afraid I'll have to find my passport and I'm definitely going to need your help soon. I'll be in touch. Bye for now. Oh, oh my God. The first the music. Yeah. I yeah. would have done but a number the second one. That's one critique of the title, just like the, the girl detective books. It's not descriptive. One yeah. step ahead. Yeah, what does that even mean? Of the thief? We're but not, you're though. not. We're one step behind. Yeah. <laughs> so they're one step ahead? They must Maybe? be, I guess. I don't know. Okay. It should have been okay. something like star or like astronomy related. Yeah, definitely. Or just like, you know, the case of the missing necklace or something like yeah. that. Yeah. My So my first thing that I want to say about it is the voice actor that they got for Nancy Hare sounds an awful lot like um, Lonnie Minnelli, but you it's not, so? but it's definitely not. Oh, it's not her. It's just very similar. It's like so eerily similar. I guess. It's you close know? enough. Yeah. That it's like, this was a choice. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Okay. Other thoughts? Should we flashlight score it? Yeah. So at the end of every episode, we give the thing that we have just done, watched, read, whatever, a flashlight score of one to five. I... <laughs> this is a tough one. Okay. No, because like if I think about this in the context of the game in which it's supposed to be played, like um, this was supposed to be played at a children's mystery party game. Right. And I think that if you set that all up and you had a bunch of little kids... It would be a fun time. It would be a good way to spend an afternoon. You think it's probably not going to last. It's going to last, you know, one to three hours. I'm thinking like eight-year-olds would dig this game. Exactly. Oh, yeah. So I don't think it's bad. I think it's just, you know, for a much more specific age group. Right. Um, And so I would probably give it a three flashlight score. Because I think otherwise it's a cute little fun murder mystery party game for kids. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm kind of disappointed that they never made more because yeah. that would have been a nice whole series if yeah. this had continued, but yeah. oh well. Yeah, I'd say a three as well. I think yeah. that that's a fair score. Yeah. What about you guys? Yeah, for like eight-year-olds, a three. If you, if you, but the all ages thing is where it gets me because I'm like, I feel like... Yeah. When it came out, how old we were was that 12 to 13 age group. Would like, have been more a little simple for us. Yeah. Yeah. So it should probably be like a up to 12, like a 6 to 12 type yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, if you're going to tr- play an old, hard-to-find Nancy Drew game for a child... I have to recommend the one we played last time more than this one. <laughs> <laughs> Even though, uh, callback, I do think it was more of a Nancy Drew summoning game. <laughs> oh, yes, <laughs> right. yes. Um, Did y'all summon demons? We summoned Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> um... April's trying her very best to be nice. I can see the face. <laughs> She can't do it! She can't do it, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen! I mean, there's shoestring budgets. Yeah. That's why I said off brand Nancy Drew. <laughs> um, it does seem like they were given very little resources. <laughs> And also, maybe no one was that worried about it. And, um, yeah, and honestly, the fact that there was never a follow-up game, despite the fact that, as we just heard, there was definitely... Plans to. A plan mm-hmm. to do yeah. the next one. Um, honestly, makes me think that what happened with this game is that it was made, and then they it was basically a decision of... We're going to sell this just because we want to mitigate how much money we're going to lose from this whole endeavor. Mm, mm-hmm. And um, and then that's it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, um, so, yeah, I mean, I get it. I get it. <laughs> um... But yeah, it is. It is kind of like crazy. To, it's not crazy to me. 
I was gonna say, it's crazy to me that someone got paid to make this <laughs> game. Oh, it wasn't that bad. But no, 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 no. <laughs> it's crazy that someone was likely paid to manage the creation of this game. Mm -hmm. Maybe they got fired <laughs> after the creation um, of this game. So, yeah, I'm gonna say it, you could play the game. So I'm going to give it two flashlights. And like I said, I'll just say that a lot of this has to come with kind of what we said at the beginning where I was kind of talking about how why I say it's young detective as supposed to girl detective mm. is I think this was rushed. I yeah. think it was not given really any resources or well thought out or anything like that. We definitely would have had more fun and in, in like at, if, if we were this age when we were given this we would have had more fun playing uh, I'll, her Here's the thing is I'll also say is that yeah. this seems like a lot of work for the parent yeah. to set things up because like we were Corey, Corey was basically the mom. <laughs> <laughs> And she was, uh, and we just were like, we're gonna, we're gonna pretend it's wet, <laughs> like <laughs> things like that. Um, and like I said, I didn't look at the host thing that Cora was looking at, but it didn't seem like it was the most clear thing either. It was not detailed at all. Just so yeah, like I said, <laughs> my it is a playable game. Mm -hmm. uh, I can see why kids would be into it. Honestly, I think the music great and yeah. scary of its time. It almost gives me like Batman Beyond vibes. <laughs> but I just think the management of the development really shines through. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. On Excellent. to the next one. All right. Okay, our Correct. next game is the Nancy Drew Mysteries board game. Yes. Released this year. Yeah, I'm not even sure what month. Outset, I think November? I think it's September. Okay. I think it was so, little... very recent, though. Yeah, but very recent, like this past fall. Do we want to talk about the box? It's a very cute box. It's Corey. adorable. It's clearly, this is from um, Ghost of Blackwood Hall, or... Um, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, is it Blackwood it? Manor? It's not Blackwood Manor. No, it's Blackwood Hall. You're right. It's... Yeah. Um, the, the book. Yeah, the, right, whatever that one is. This illustration of Bess and George is clearly them. So it's Nancy in the foreground looking over her shoulder. Bess and George are behind her holding the flashlight, and they're pointing the flashlight at this, like, haunted mansion-looking thing in the background. Um, While the and, moon hangs high in the sky. Yes. And this is giving, like, message in a haunted mansion vibes to mm -hmm. this. I don't know if that is from one of the book covers or if this is, but Bess and George definitely are. Nancy is very clearly redheaded. Yes. Which means this is the 1950s version of Nancy, mm -hmm. which tracks with the clothes as well well so i'm very excited for this one me too nancy's wearing a little ascot it's very cute this one is <laughs> um ages eight plus and it requires at least three players it says so it has to be like clue if that's the case you can't play clue with two people i know because Corey and i have tried <laughs> <laughs> oh, here i mean we go. i appreciate that it doesn't just say all ages on it yeah here on the, the side we have, um, this is an illustration from Clue in the Crossword Cipher. Yeah. And then this has to be another one. Like, all of them are... Mm -hmm. That's very the cute. The art's very cute. It's very cute. And it's very pop arty. It's very mm -hmm. comic book style um, with, like, you know, the dots and the bold prints and red, uh, are, uh, you know, red, yellow, and, and blue colors. All right. Let's this open George? the game. It's probably George, yeah. Yeah. Appreciate George. It doesn't look white. George yeah, does George does white. not look white, which is nice. Oh, it's a small Ooh. little game board. Okay, we're opening the box Ooh. now. Instead of like the normal four-way fold-out game board, it's a little tri-fold. Um, I guess just like what eight by eight inches by eight inches each. That's not eight inches. I mean each little square. So oh, <laughs> like, so like two feet by eight foot wide. So it's yeah. tiny. And then we have little wooden people. It okay, so like. a cute. moment of once you check out the board and we can see the rest of the stuff in the box, everything is so cute. It is cute. Very cute. We also have a dice, a little scoring sheet, a sleuthing sheet, excuse me. Oh my god! Um, I'm sorry, I'm so excited. <laughs> I just got so excited. They, the little game oh, sheets. It's all very They look mid. like, like, little... It's I mean, I'm getting very, like mid-century modern. Yeah, this yeah. is all very mid-century modern. Yes, I'm obsessed. I love like, it so much. Also, already. I can like already see one of the cards. Like, 
Well, they yeah. have little things. We have, like what's it? Mystery to solve, mm-hmm. suspicious character, who's in trouble, crime committed, sleuthing equipment. Ooh. Right. Yeah, so there's more, there's definitely more categories than there are in the traditional clue. It's not just, you know, who, you know, uh, suspect, Sorry. you're right, <laughs> suspect, you know, object the of the now. crime and location of the crime. It's all, it's those five categories. Also, there are, um, you know, some locations that we are aware of on the game board. There's the Lilac Inn, mm-hmm. the Moss Covered Mansion, the Drew Home, of course, Twin Elms, and then Moonstone Castle. Pine Hill as well. Oh, yeah, Pine Hill. Missed that one. Should I read the uh, instructions here? Yes, please. Nancy, Drew, and friends have embarked on another adventure. The object of the game is to use your powers of logic to figure out which mystery needs solving, which or what crime has been committed, and who did it. So each player gets a sleuthing sheet and a pencil. Each player chooses their pawn, playing piece, and selects their starting location on the board. No two sleuths may start at the same location. Mm. Sort the evidence cards into five color-coded categories and shuffle each pile separately. It's clue. Okay. It's clue. Yeah. With the... Oh, yeah. With the remaining evidence cards, deal one card from each category to each player. All players should make a note of the cards in their hands on their sleuthing sheet, keeping the information secret from the other players. If there are fewer than six players, place the leftover ones face down on the locations on the boards. These will be collected as the game progresses. Okay, so we each get one of these. Wait, don't we have to pull one out first? Oh, sorry, I missed that part. Yeah. I know, because right I've now. done that before in a game of Clue where I was putting <laughs> the game board for everyone, and I forgot to do that step, and then it got things got very weird very quickly. We were like two rounds in, we're like, wait a second, yeah. something is yeah. wrong. Sure, five. Something's fucky here. Why is it? <laughs> That's a good adjective. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, now we're good. Yeah. Okay, so players try to figure out which evidence cards... Oh have been removed from play. These cards will reveal which mystery to solve, which inqu- which sleuthing equipment is used, which crime was committed, and who's in trouble during the case. Youngest which suspicious character is involved. Oh, and which suspicious suspicious character is involved. The youngest player starts by rolling the dice and then moving their pawn to another location on the board. After their turn... <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm after you. Uh... Yeah, you're, you're, yeah, February, for those at April, home, in case y'all keep this in, when she said the youngest people, <laughs> Becky and I both immediately did pointed at each other, <laughs> mental math, and pointed at each other. And then Corey pointed out that it was clearly her. <laughs> they both have April birthdays, but Becky's is like two weeks after April, so you would have yeah. been younger anyway. Oh, I don't know why I thought your birthday was like a couple days Yours is the 14th. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Unless we think it was somebody else. Okay. And then Emily's older than everyone here. Yeah. Yeah. By like, yeah. By like two, two months. months. Yeah. <laughs> Probably within three months. She's the old lady. Okay. Okay. Players may move in either direction along the road. For example, if the blue pawn is below at Nancy Drew's house and the player rolls a two, they can move to Moonstone Castle or to Pine Hill. If the location has any matching evidence cards remaining on the board, only in games with fewer than six players, the player takes the top card and adds it to their hand, crossing it off the sleuthing sheet. For instance, if the player lands on Lilac Inn, which has a purple key, they take the purple mystery to solve card. If cards for a location are available on the board, the the active player must draw one and cannot perform action B or C. Okay. okay. So wait. So let me just get this straight. You so the the order is you roll the first the youngest person's gonna roll, they can move however many they roll Mm -hmm. in any direction. Mm -hmm. If there's a card at that location, they have to pick it up and look at it. Yes, and if there isn't a card, then you can choose either B or C, which is asking people, I'm guessing. Yeah. Okay. So your B option is if there are no more evidence cards on the board that match the active player's location, then they may interrogate one other player who shares the same location. If more than one, the active player chooses who to interrogate. The interrogated player must hand over all cards from their hand that what? match the location of the active player. That match the location? For instance, if the players meet at the moss-covered mansion, the interrogated player gives all of their who's in trouble cards to the active player. Oh, okay. The active player records the card information on their sleuthing sheet and adds these cards to their hands. If the active player interrogates a player and they no longer have that location's cards in their hands, 
then the unfortunately the active player's turn is over without gaining any new information. Okay. So pay attention to what cards people have in their hand because mm -hmm. you can interrogate them for who's in trouble and they don't have any who's in trouble Do cards. You just wasted your turn. So like, can I keep my cards like this? It doesn't say anything. All right, well then. <laughs> Miss competitive. It's already um, gearing up to the try and win. The C option is if there are no evidence cards on the board that match the active player's location and no other players share that location, then the active player may choose any player to interrogate. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> the interrogated player gives all the evidence cards of the active player's location type to the active player. Note, players should try to keep the number and kinds of cards they have a secret by hiding them with their hand or sleuthing sheet. This way, opponents may waste turns by asking for cards another player does not have. And there's also uh, an option D, if you're in Nancy Drew's home. Because you might notice, she is a little question, question mark mm. in all colors. Mm. On this location, if there, are any, if there are cards left on the board, then the player chooses one from any category. Mm. If there are no cards left on the board, the active player may interrogate another player for any evidence category. If there are other players at Nancy Drew's house, the active player must interrogate one of these players. As before, the interrogated player hands over all evidence cards from the category requested by the active player. If no other player is at the Nancy Drew's house, then the active player may interrogate any opponent from any, about any category. As the game progresses, information will be gathered about the cards in play and the identity of the missing evidence cards hidden in the box will gradually be revealed. Winning the game. At the start of their turn, before rolling the die, the active player can choose to guess the solution to the mystery of the missing cards. First, the player announces which cards they believe have been set aside in the box. Then the active player looks at the set of missing evidence cards in the box, keeping them hidden from other players and compares them to their guess. If their guess is correct, they win the game. If they are wrong, then they must reveal their hand to the other players and drop out of the game without sharing the solution. Play continues in this way until one successful sleuth manages to solve the mystery or only one player remains in play. Yeah. All right. Cool. I think I get it. I think so too. This is very cute. Very cute. I like this a lot. All oh, right. I need so, to be on the board. I guess yeah, I'll Corey, pick that. your spot because you're going first. Yeah, I guess is that a spot right there? Okay, so I'm at Moonstone Castle and I just roll the dice. <laughs> None of them are names, are they? I'm interrogating you, Corey. You have to give me all your suspicious characters. Mm. These are mine now. Okay, have fun with them. This is an interesting... It's hard to play strategy with this because somebody takes your cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I can't be like, oh, well, April asked for, you know, this. So I can track what April asked for versus to what, based on what mm -hmm. other people show right. or, you know? <laughs> this is clever. <laughs> it's Emily's turn. So I wonder how to do that. Ooh. Ooh. That was a good die. One. Oh, no. All right. I'm going for moss-covered mage. Who's in trouble? trouble. Again. Okay, because I'm going back to Pine Hill. <laughs> Sorry. I'll bump the mic too. Alright, you get to interrogate. Ooh, folks. okay. Who am I gonna interrogate? Who's that? That's April and Corey? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um Well. Um, April, I will see all your suspicious characters. Okay. I was gonna say, <laughs> Becky, I believe in you. Do not ask Corey for her card. No, that will be the end of your turn. <laughs> You're so right, Corey. <laughs> right. Corey. If this ends up being Bess is in trouble, I'm gonna flip the table. <laughs> Why? I don't like it when they put Bess in danger. We've already had it in Final Scene, technically, in the book. Yeah. In uh, Ransom of the Seven Ships. Yeah. I don't like it. Is Bess the sidekick? She's, she's one of the sidekicks. Okay. Yeah. I thought the and she's said the, earlier, but I was a She's sure. the prissy feminine girl sidekick. Mm -hmm. That's why. Also, they love Bess. We love. We're I listen to the podcast. <laughs> I do listen to the podcast. 
It's because Bess gets constantly shit on. She does. They They're talk so about how fat her. she is. They make fun of her for being fat. Ow. And, and liking boys and being girly. And liking food. And liking food. Um, food is amazing. Boys can come or go. But, like, <laughs> There's also food. some, like, very, like, um, concerning, like, diet culture stuff with Bess. Um... Like, Bess would be, like, her existence would be okay if she would just lose five pounds. I'll like, never forget. she's just trapped. The scene in um, the Amish country one, mm. uh, what is that, the witch tree witch, symbol? Witch tree, yeah. Where they are, like, waiting on Nancy or something, and George and Bess are weighing themselves on an antique <sighs> scale mm-hmm. in the barn, and Bess is talking about how, yeah, she, she's like, five pounds this scale probably doesn't perfect. even go up that high, and, like... This, I will say, it kind of reminds me of... The Rhoda character in Mary Tyler Moore show, except the Rhoda character, like, no one, like, like to be clear, Mary Tyler Moore is never mean to Rhoda, but Rhoda shits on herself yeah, all the time. Yeah, shits on herself, too. Yeah. And there's an episode where, like, she finally loses the weight, and, like, they have to tell her, like, like, why are you still shitting on yourself? Like, mm-hmm. you're your goal weight now. Yeah. Like, why are you doing this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I think the dice is rigged. We all keep rolling <laughs> ones. I keep rolling three. I've well, I rolled all three. sorts of numbers. So. Ah, maybe not. Okay. But there have been a lot of ones. I've only rolled ones. <laughs> <laughs> I want to tell you it likes me best. It's giving me variety. That was a bad decision. Because <laughs> <laughs> I have all of them. You have all of them? <laughs> okay, well, just ask someone so we can keep going. <laughs> okay. I'm pretty sure I have all of them. Because <laughs> um, I've marked them all down. <laughs> um, April? I don't know. Yeah. All right, Becky's turn. All right, let's hope we do one. Damn it. Okay, I keep going back and forth between <laughs> Fucking Moonstone Castle in the Moss Covered Mansion. I don't need to know that. Um, you get to interrogate anyone for crime committed. I mean, I've been quiet, guys. Hey, okay, Emily, show me your show me your crime committed card. <laughs> I swear to God, if that's the only one you don't have. Oh no. Okay. I have like all of them too. Oh, God. <laughs> See, I'm just been over here. Just but I don't know how many the, of these are collecting the cards and. <laughs> And it's fine if you guys just didn't invite me to the party at Nancy's house. <laughs> it's fine. Um, okay, I'm gonna go to Who's in Trouble. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> Emily, can you show me your uh, Who's in Trouble charts? I. That was the appropriate choice. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I love how you already. We established who you should ask for that next. I don't Last remember term. that far back. <laughs> April? Becky, I'll have those cards when you're done. <laughs> <laughs> Can someone have me the die, please? <sighs> God damn it, how? And then can I have them when you're done, Corey? Yes. <laughs> we're, we're obviously not wow. competitive former get to get into. What else am I oh, supposed wait. to do? Ask Becky for the cards that Corey just <laughs> took for her? I was like, roll three, so the other I could go. I see that. <sighs> Why couldn't it have been that? I know. Okay. I know. <laughs> Emily, are you about to solve it? No, I need two more. Oh, okay. Hmm. What a shame. Yeah, I'm ready to solve. April, give down. me your blues. <laughs> give me your sleuthing equipment. Good at see. You're too slow, Joe, because I am ready to solve. Okay, I am going to accuse. Is this like clear? You're just going to list what you think okay. happened. Lost Will, Hannah Gruen, Flashlight, Willie Wharton, Kidnapping. I think now we look at the cards? I yeah. She looks at the cards. Oh, okay. I'm right. Yay! Yay! That's what I had. Congratulations. Thank you. 
Yeah, I needed this just the sleuthing equipment for like the past few a couple of turns, yeah. but I kept not landing where That's, I could get him. I think that ends up being what ends up being the problem of this game is that all the cards get clumped together, mm -hmm. and that yes. like you can't. I mean, unless you remember, which is I guess part of the point is remembering who has. Them. Oh yeah, I loved how I because I kept all my stuff here. Y'all didn't know when I didn't have any cards. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> if you don't remember, then you're just you you just can't fill that category until it, it comes yeah. around again. Or right. if you can't roll the right number. Yeah, like I said, because the there right were a place. couple of turns where I was like, I need sleeping equipment now, just keeping track. I was like, all right, they're in Emily. Yeah, right. I landed on this after I already had it, and I was like, well, I guess I can ask. Yeah. Okay, now they're at Becky. Yeah. Okay, I think that was a cute fun I like game. it. It was great. Yeah. It was really good. It was very, I mean, the strategy, once you get going with it, it's very simple, but uh -huh. like, in a good way, that yeah. it's not overly complicated, you just, you know exactly what you're doing. There is strategy. strategy. Yeah. There is strategy. It's great. The strategy is memory, which yeah. <laughs> is not necessarily everyone's strong suit. Um, I mean, it's paying attention. Yeah. And memory, and which are... Observing. If you can count cards, you would be awesome at this game. Absolutely. Also, there is some luck of the draw a little bit in the like, luck of the roll, I guess, with the number that you roll. That does affect a lot of the gameplay. But sure. There's... Okay, this looks like the Drew house is on fire. It oh, does, it doesn't does. it? Yeah, we have to talk about the art on these cards because they are so cute. Mm -hmm. Although the kidnapping one is quite terrifying. Yeah. I don't like oh, that. I don't think I saw that one at all. Like, uh, maybe we should <laughs> fly this game for, like, potentially troubling imagery. I mean, other than that one. Yeah, I want to be able to see all this? the art. Hold on. Why is Best drowning, though? Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> this you know art what it, is so good. You know what it kind of reminds me of is the art in the children's game we played last time where we summoned Nancy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Where that one was contemporaneous. Mm-hmm. And this is an ode, too. Mm-hmm. I just really like it. <laughs> it's pretty. It is pretty. Mm -hmm. It's very bold, bold colors. Really, just easy to look at. It's very it? nostalgic, mm -hmm. like the Archie comics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, flashlight scores. I give this one a five out of five. I think it's a five. Absolutely. This. I mean, it's great. I. I mean, I didn't enjoy it like as much as I enjoyed um, like Mystery at Magnolia Gardens, which is sure. a hunter killer game. But that that game is so much more my vibe that's than so, this. That's, that's, that's just in like a different league. Absolutely, <laughs> totally my entire like reason for being are games like that. But this game is just excellent. I mean, it's just really good for what it is. You know what I mean? Which I think is like a simplified version of Clue. Mm -hmm. um, and it's beautiful, and it's easy to play, it's quick. I think this would be an excellent game for, yeah. you know, a family game night situation. Absolutely. You know, I feel like this is, because it, it is literally, like, the age range is my niece. I was like, this is totally something that I think, like, me, my niece and her friends would love to play, um, because you... Because, like, even though it was funny and sometimes rushing out, like, the cards got clumped mm -hmm. up, um, but it also, but it also, it was funny whenever, like, there was a little point where the cards went, okay, Becky got the cards, then Corey got the cards, and then I got the cards. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that was really fun, actually. So, yeah, I think, um, I think this is, I think this perfectly does what it is trying to do. Mm -hmm. Um, it's all very well thought out. Yeah. Which is a huge difference compared mm -hmm. to the, the 2005 game. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, five out of five for me on this one. This is like it's just it's, just, it's so well thought out. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I agree. I like how competitive you can get with it. Just yeah. because <laughs> you start off and you're like, okay, <laughs> and then you get the game and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, all right. <laughs> and then you just go. So, yeah. yeah, no, I five out of five definitely. This is this is fun. And us like hiding our cards, <laughs> and, like, like getting really territorial. <laughs> Very fun. Very fun. Welcome back, everyone. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're listening to this continuously, aren't they? Right, so. yeah. <laughs> so, welcome back for us. We've just taken a quick break. And we will be continuing with... Um, Cards Against Nancy Drew. Cards Against Nancy Drew. Yeah, so this one is played, um, you know, just like traditional Cards Against Humanity. We're all going to get seven white cards, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, there's black cards. They have a blank on them. And then we're all going to take turns 
filling in the blank and whoever has the funniest um, basically wins that round mm -hmm. um, and then um, I will say this is uh, like we said at the beginning this was created by one of our listeners Ray and her sister um, the Etsy shop that they have this game for sale on is called Weird Stuff by Ray if you want to go check it out the game is uh, very inexpensive I got it for like five bucks on Black Friday but I think even normally it's only like seven dollars so um, I'm what sure a deal. it's more than, more than worth it yeah exactly yeah. so I'm so excited yeah okay Let's go. Okay, uh, so I'll just start dealing here, right? Yep. Okay, I'm going to put the black cards face down on the table. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Hold on, let me make sure it went so to... So, we all should say that these are specifically references to the Her Interactive PC game. Correct, yeah. So, not okay. Nancy Drew in general. So, um, em uh, Emily, this might not be yeah, you, relevant you to you all. Not oh, understand. I accidentally got eight. Oh, you did? Okay, yeah. just throw one back in. Pile. April, you've played just Treasure of the Royal Tower. I have played so. exactly <laughs> one game. <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. Oh right. god, I'm so okay. excited. That's okay. I'm just gonna make make shit up. It'll be fine. Yeah. And it and it will probably be unintentionally hilarious. <laughs> we'll laugh. You might not get the joke, but they'll they'll get the joke. I can explain it too. But it probably Because that we all know what makes a joke super funny. It's when someone explains it. <laughs> okay. First black card, here we go. Blank is the new blank. Oh, a two carter. Okay. So the way you put them down for me is put them down so that if I just if I just turn it over, because I'm gonna turn them over together. Together. This is so your the first, first one. one on the bottom. Yeah. None yeah. of these make sense. This is gonna be great. Okay. Blank is the new blank. <laughs> Emily, I'd like to remind you that my knowledge of Nancy Drew is well, not like, that much more than you. These don't even go together. This is like really bad. Okay. Death by psychotic chicken is the new getting information out of a 12-year-old by threatening to let them suffocate. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Pelting a 10-year-old child with snowballs is the new accidentally killing people. <laughs> <laughs> Being framed for murder is the new John Michael Trichonod's shiny bald head. Jean Michel Trichonod. 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 Uh, I'm gonna go with pelting a ten year old child with snowballs. Is the new accidentally killing people. That's I like me. that one. Told you mine made zero sense. Was it the last one? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. I wish Nancy could get her phone wallpaper to a picture of blank. What? I wish Nancy could get her phone wallpaper to a picture of blank. Hey, nerds. <laughs> I wish Nancy could get her phone wallpaper to a picture of Alec Fell being sassy, Scott Varnell's beard, <laughs> Camille's creepy dolls. Oh, God. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I know none of this, but I like the creepy dolls. I think yeah. they're cool. I think creepy right. dolls are cool. That was my exact rationale when I put it in. <laughs> I was like, well, if I saw someone had creepy dolls as their phone background, like, that's a story. <laughs> oh, it's a story, all right. All right. The reason Midnight in Salem took so long was because of blank. Oh, so Midnight in Salem is the most recently released her interactive game that bombed so badly because it was basically unplayable. Let's see. The reason Midnight in Salem took so long was because of a compilation of Nancy's grunts throughout the game. <laughs> That's not wrong. Whatever in Renee Amon's pouch around her neck. Hmm. Or a robotic cat. It's a compilation of Nancy's grunts. <laughs> yeah, boy. Hilarious. Hilarious. All right. If you like blank, then we're automatically best friends. Gosh. <laughs> okay, if you like hitting someone in the <laughs> <laughs> If you like hitting someone in the head with an air canister to be a trained killer whale, then we're automatically <laughs> best friends. If you like the taxi driver and stay tuned for danger, then we're automatically best friends. It's just the voice of Nancy being um, very racist. <laughs> If you like a cemetery scavenger hunt, then we're automatically best friends. It's gotta be hitting someone with a yes. canister. <laughs> I didn't know what the taxi driver was. I was like, this sounds like a niche thing. Maybe it's funny. And 
turns out it was racist. <laughs> she tries to do other other ethnicity sports, isn't it? Real bad. The water from the well at Mickey Malone's cabin contains traces of blank. The water from the well at Mickey Malone's cabin contains traces of Nick Falcone. <laughs> Lamont's nose spray. Ooh. Lori Gerard. <laughs> I don't know who any of these people are. <laughs> and unfortunately, um, I'm gonna. And two of them have, are the same premise. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> However, I think Nick Falcone sounds funny as the end of it. So Nick Falcone wins. <laughs> it's also Alex. the one that only canonically makes sense, I guess. <laughs> Traces of Nick it, Falcone in the water. Well, because he comes before oh, oh, Ghost Dogs of Moon Lake. Yes, yes, okay, fair enough. Because Lori Gerard's after. So he gets shredded in a bit of well. Yeah, his fate is death and decomposing in a well. I guess it's yes. <laughs> my turn. <laughs> it's Emily's turn. Double one. Good news, blank. Bad news, blank. Oh, right, do you want to do the same map that I did? Where you flip it over and the top, like the one that's on the bottom is the one yeah, you threw. Okay. Yeah, Yeah. I can't decide which was funnier one way or the other. Oh, these are particularly funny. Well, I don't know anything, so <laughs> you never know. It's the lack true. of context might make it even funnier. Yeah. <laughs> Good news. Faking a haunting. Bad news. Framing someone for arson. Yeah. Okay. Good news. Ghosts. Bad news. It's lost. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. <laughs> okay. Um, good news. Sending anonymous death threats to your boss. <laughs> Bad news. Being crushed by an elevator. I like death threats. Seriously? Yes. Oh, shut up. <laughs> the worst clue crew scandal is blank. Ooh. Oh. What is the worst clue crew scandal? <laughs> So the Clue Crew is fans of Nancy Drew. Okay. The, not to be confused with the Drew Crew, which is best George and Ned, mm-hmm. the Hardy Boys, mm-hmm. Hannah, Carson, mm-hmm. Nancy's crew, you know. You mean her minions. Her minions, yes. All right, the worst Clue Crew damn, scandal is... I just is... drew the card that would have been the best for that. Oh, damn. Classic. Worst Clue <laughs> Crew scandal is Ranger, Inco- Ranger Acres being in the model match video game. <laughs> Worst Clue Crew scandal is Bess almost killing Lamont. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Worst Clue Crew scandal is PG Krollmeister. Oh. I know my pick. It's gotta be Bess. Are you seriously? Yeah. Oh my god. Is that yours? Yeah, it is, man. Was what was yours gonna be? Mine was gonna be um, uh, Ranger Acres being in the. Oh, no, yeah. mine. <laughs> Alright. Blank is kinda hot. Not gonna lie. Mm. <laughs> oh, so many good ones. Oh, that's the nuance is going to be lost on April, and I feel bad. Um, <laughs> anyway, I want to see it. I want to see I, it. I, oh, I, there's so many good ones. If, <laughs> if they don't make sense, I'll ask who it is. And y'all can tell me. <laughs> like, if I feel like it's relevant. I feel like this one is the one that April's If it's gonna not like Bill... Oh, damn, I missed... Never mind. If it's not like Nick Mine Falcone, where, I, where I'm just like, it sounds funny, I'll ask. Like, if, if, if I ever get a turn where it's just three names... <laughs> You'd be like, I don't know any of this. I'm gonna need, and it, if I can't get it by just by how funny I think the name sounds, okay. I'm gonna need some details. I have to say, I have a second choice for that, and if I'll tell, then I'll tell y'all afterwards. Okay. Pushing well, children you. down a well is kind of hot. I'm gonna lie. Oh. A long story about how you lost your fingers is kind of hot. <laughs> not gonna lie. Snooping around in other people's fireplaces is kind of <laughs> hot. Not gonna lie. <laughs> I do. I, I, this is not my pick, and that's I'm not. I do like that the fireplaces might be kind of hot. Like, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm gonna go with a long story about how you lost your fingers. Yes. <laughs> I was uh, alternatively gonna play Jacques Brunet. Oh, okay. Jacques Brunet's kind of hot. Nancy Drew and the mystery of blank. Nancy Drew and the mystery of Prudence Rutherford's fashion sense. <laughs> I don't know who Prudence Rutherford is, but burn! <laughs> Nancy Drew and the mystery of screaming for help in ice caves. <laughs> Nancy Drew and the mystery of Nancy canonically being a K-pop fan in Sunny June's comics. <laughs> I don't know who Sunny, Sunny June, June is. Oh, oh. He don't worry about is it. He's like a 
kind of a recurring character in the Nancy Drew games, except he's never seen, and he's always previously well, he was... Seen. Well, we, later he's seen, but usually he's just... He leaves evidence of his being at a location before Nancy was there. Like, she goes to be an intern at Beach Hill, and the previous intern was Sunny June. Or, like... And it's everywhere. Like Everywhere, everywhere she goes, Sunny goes, June the previous, was, the previous was... person there was Sunny June. Wait, so mm-hmm. Sunny June made comics of Nancy Drew liking K-pop? Yes. Yes. <laughs> He's a weird dude. He also believes in aliens. Like, fully believes that they are visitors among and us And then currently. he's not wrong either, which is part of the weirdness of that game. Wait, right. who won? Ice Caves. Oh, me. <laughs> okay. Becky? Yeah. Oh, is wait. It? Yes. Name one good reason to play the Nancy Drew games. <laughs> There's gonna be lots. This one's gonna be good. I can feel it. Okay, name one good reason to play the Nancy Drew games. Sunny June. <laughs> All right. There we go. Kidnapping your boyfriend's dog. That's Elizabeth in um, Oh, in I was like, wait, what's that reference? <laughs> Eating $2,350 worth of ice cream. Yes, that's the winner. <laughs> that is the winner. That was me. <laughs> Thank you. Nice. <laughs> One of, in one of the games, you can just sample as many ice cream flavors as that you want, and at the end of the game, it gives you your receipt. <laughs> <laughs> We're all tied currently with three cards. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Pretty oh. good. All right, on to the next one. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's a double. Current items in Nancy's bag are blank and blank. So first oh, one in the bottom, but I guess it doesn't really matter in this case. Oh, are we ready? Is this it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, current items in Nancy's bag are... A warm lettuce bagel sandwich <laughs> and a cardboard cutout of Brady Armstrong hugging Rick Arlen. That's a pretty good one. <laughs> Current items in Nancy's bag are a dozen oranges and Kit Foley. <laughs> Current items in Nancy's bag are a crystal skull and Jacques Brunet. It's got to be the bagel sandwich yeah. and Brady Armstrong <laughs> cutout. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The real treasure in the Royal Tower was actually... Blank. The real treasure in the real tower is actually the lack of time zones. Mm. The real treasure in the real tower is actually the Parisian catacombs. And the real treasure in the real tower is actually a pet pig named Mary. Aww. It's definitely that one. <laughs> I feel like that like, made sense. <laughs> the real creature of Kapu Cave. Kapu mm-hmm. Cave. Kapu, Kapu Cave. cave. Mm-hmm. Was actually blank. <laughs> Remember, I'm not gonna know what it is. I know, but so. still, some of them just don't make sense. <laughs> I'm gonna do this one. I don't know what it means. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know what it means, how am I supposed to know what it means? I mean, I do, but it's like, mm-hmm. in context. Is okay. it? <laughs> no. The real creature of Kapu Cave was unripe vegetables. Okay. Okay. Deer mice. Ooh. Mr. Darcy the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Darcy the chicken wins because he's yeah. a chicken. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's five for me. <laughs> I think I'm at four. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Everybody else still three. three. And could you win the last two in a row? I'm on a roll. First time Nancy was arrested was for arson. This time it's blank. These are so creative. Mm-hmm. Also, I wonder what the ASMR of like these cards moving is gonna be like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, no. play a good one. I don't have any good ones for Extend this. Extend your lead. <sighs> okay, this. It doesn't make sense, but I gotta use it. It's First the time one. Nancy was arrested was for arson. This time it's Nancy ziplining across two buildings to break into Bridget's room. The real flames for the Persephone and Winter set uh, are a jigsaw puzzle that turns into a slider puzzle. Yeah, it's gotta be Nancy ziplining across two Yay! buildings to break into Bridget's room. That's the crime. That's the crime. Or it could be arson again. <laughs> could be arson. You can get arrested for arson many times. It's not like a double jeopardy thing. <laughs> like you committed, you were found guilty of committing arson once. Now you can do arson as much as you want. At first, I was like blank as a joke, but bro, I don't think it's a joke anymore. <laughs> okay. 
right, Becky already won this one, I can tell. <laughs> I don't know, but I thought it was funny. <laughs> All right, at first, I was like, dying from drinking too much water is a joke, but bro, I don't think it's a joke anymore. That's pretty good. <laughs> at first, I was like, I fired and I missed. <laughs> As a joke, but I don't think it's a joke anymore. <laughs> At first I was like, Minette's use of the word rude as a joke, but probably, it's got to be dying from drinking water. Yes! I mean, that's factual. It is factual. You can get water poisoning, but what a way to go. <laughs> oh, oh, it's a 2-1. Oh. Big Island Mike's ideal night in includes blank and blank. Okay, Big Island Mike's El Deal Night Inn includes Bernie the Alligator <laughs> and regular Nancy Drew. Hey! Guys, there was a blank card, so I made my own. That's how they got in there. <laughs> <laughs> that was not part of the set, but hey, if you buy it, you can also make your own card <laughs> and make it that. <laughs> Big Island Mike's El Deal Night Inn includes Iggy the Iguana and being knocked out. I'm not <laughs> sure that that's healthy, Big Island Mike. <laughs> Big Island Mike's El Deal Night Inn includes... The sweet smell of fried chicken <laughs> and Colton Birchfield, the fiance. <laughs> um, me too. Me too. Like me too. <laughs> what? <laughs> Which I don't one? Know. Being knocked out? <laughs> oh, no, no, it's the, the fried chicken one. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go with Iggy Ogata and being knocked out. <laughs> I'm worried about Big Island Mike, but that was funny. <laughs> Good, 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 good. Okay, last one. Her Interactives, which is the game company that makes the Nate Street games. Her Interactives latest Instagram challenge is making bad memes about <laughs> savage. <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> I'm already laughing because I'm just thinking about all the bad memes they do. Okay, turn around to like Instagram challenge is making bad memes about the doll that looks like Nancy, best burnt pink fire, Moira Chisholm hitting Alec Fell with her purse. Oh, Moira Chisholm hitting Alec yes! Fell with her purse. <laughs> Nice. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I think that I makes think so. Emily our winner tonight. How many cards did you end up with? Nine. Nine. Nine? Which proves. What do yeah. you have? I think I have seven. I, I have, have seven. seven. Yeah. And I lost. Oh. But this proves that you don't actually have to understand any of the references to win this game. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very good. Did y'all enjoy it, at least, if you couldn't so, understand some of the jokes? Oh, my so, gosh. Um, yes. A couple ones that I wish I had realized was, um, I was unsure if I was remembering who Deidre was correctly, mm -hmm. but for the ship one, I almost put in Deidre and the doll looks like Nancy Drew for the ship. And then I also like thought of putting in the doll that looks like Nancy Drew for the only thing that can kill Nancy Drew. <laughs> <laughs> But that one was too late. <laughs> that one's genius, though. Oh this gosh. is Wrecked Rue, Mercury's Wand, Tino Balducci's Survey. Kidnapping your own nephew for your revenge plot. <laughs> yes! <laughs> no, this Nancy's one's... Nancy's ziplining uphill to get back to her room. That kills me. The I thing forgot. I think that was the hardest part for playing it, if you're not familiar with Nancy Drew, is... When it's just a character's name. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. don't get the... Because I could get, like, like whenever I did, like, the cardboard cutout one, I was like, I don't know who I always see people, but a cardboard cutout of someone hugging someone else is funny. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I assume it's only heightened if you know what it is. Whereas when it was just, like, just someone's name, like, Judge blah blah blah, I'm like, I don't know the context for this at all. <laughs> oh, Yeah. I love that. That, that was, was so fun. much fun. Five out of five flashlights. Easily yeah. five. Yeah. I think that if you if you had a group of Nancy Drew fans in your house, you have to play this game. Oh, I'm thinking we're bringing this to the convention next oh, year. Oh, I was going to tell yes. you. Absolutely should. We have to. Yes. Um, I think it's like legally mandatory. Yeah. Because... I mean, and we didn't get through all the cards, but just saying, I'm pretty sure you could play this with children. Um. <laughs> 
maybe. There was a couple in there that might mm. be a little questionable, but depending yeah. on the age, absolutely. Yeah. And maybe um, just take out those couple of questionable ones if you wanted to play with kids. Mm-hmm. I um, had to read them all in the course of cutting them because it's uh, like a PDF download and you cut, like, print them out and cut them okay. up so you make cards. Um, and so I read them all when I was cutting them up yesterday and they were all excellent. So, yeah. It was, oh. it was a good experience. Ray and your sister, y'all did an amazing job with this game. Snaps. Yeah. This is easily five awesome. flashlights. Yeah. Yeah. Five out of five. Totally, totally yeah. awesome. Yeah, no. I mean, it, the, the play, <laughs> it's, it's cartoons and many, it's apples to apples. It's a good game. Uh, it seems to be full of chocolate things. I don't think mm-hmm. you could go wrong with it. By all yeah. that. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys so much for listening. That was our episode 50. Join us next time when we don't know what we are <laughs> covering yet. Yeah, so thank you for coming along for our board games episode. Do you guys want to say anything for our outro? Listen to Becky and Corey about the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Becky and Corey are awesome. Um, 10 out of 10 recommend. Aww. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I always tell people I'm a little bit biased because I always feel like the best podcasts, well, not like the best, like, funny podcasts are normally ones where it just sounds like you're listening to your friends talk about something. And you're literally and listening to your friends talk. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> So I will advise, but I I listen to it every every two weeks when it comes out. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you all for joining us today. Thank you for listening. Yeah, this was wonderful. And um, yeah, we're going to move on to a new series. Mm-hmm. Not the diaries anymore, sadly, but whatever we're going to choose next. We actually don't know yet because our patrons are still deciding. Mm-hmm. The poll doesn't close for another couple of days as of when we're recording this. But I know that whatever it will be will probably be wonderful because mm-hmm. it's all Nancy Drew. So, yes. Yeah. Very excited. And we'll see you then, regular Drews. Bye. Thank you for listening to Regular Nancy Drew. Email us at regularnancydrew at gmail.com. If you like this episode, make sure to rate, review, and subscribe. You can also follow us on Instagram at regularnancydrew and Twitter at regularnd. You can also support us on Patreon. Patrons at the $3 level vote on upcoming episode topics and get exclusive access to our Scoop Sesh series. And all patrons receive early access to each episode as well as weekly bonus content. And to all you regular Drews out there, thanks for listening. listening.